Joining me today, Greg Olson. Six years, he was the closer for the Orioles that we can remember back when he came in a game, it was going to get closed. 37 saves in one season, he became an Oriole Hall of Famer. But Greg, I want to talk a little bit about your approach to pitching when it comes in, the mindset that it takes for a closer to come into every single game under the pressure all the time. You know what, I, uh, I, I really look back and go, I, I, I put myself under more stress than I think the situation dictated because I had so much um, pressure on myself to go out and succeed and to cover the team. It was my job. When I came in in the ninth inning, it was my job to make sure this game was over with. And I felt like I had the 25 guys on my team, I had the fans, and I had all those guys on my back, and it was my job to finish this game. It was such a tight curveball. Tippy, I could see, he didn't have fingers like yours. He had little bitty fingers, but for some reason, he could make that ball spin. Show me how you held yours, because well, a lot of guys like to go right off of that four seam okay, tread. So, so yeah. I have small hands, so I had, a, I had a death grip on my middle finger, and I would, I would get somewhere around the horseshoe, and it, depend, it really went week to week. It was, mm -hmm. it was, you know, what's your grip? And then this week, it's, it's here on the horseshoe. But I, I threw it with two fingers. So I had my middle finger locked in on a seam. I had my thumb directly underneath, and my index finger came off the ball. Um, and it was, for me, it was trying to create as much spin as I could with hand angle here, I call it cushioning the elbow, pulling the elbow in a little bit, yeah. and then a shortened, shortened arm arc in front. And my first couple years with the Orioles, 90, 89 to 91, I would shorten my stride on my, on my breaking ball. So I'd come up and it'd be here, and if my normal fastball is landing a little bit heel to toe for me, mm -hmm. then I know when I'm gonna throw a curveball and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw right. a hard one with two strikes, then I would, I would come down almost three or four inches shorter on my stride yeah. to create more top to bottom uh, tilt. A lot more arc. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard when you get in this, did you break your elbow or did you just kind of stay stiff right in here? Because it looks like it would put a lot of stress on this area right here. You know what, it really didn't. The the traditional curveball, which is me taking, me taking this part of my hand into my stomach is nothing on the elbow. Yeah. For me, it's here to here and I feel like I'm pulling pulling my elbow in the, in front just a little bit. Right. Um, and then in '92, I my mechanics changed, or I got changed, and I be, I became a uh, the curveball went to about 84 miles an hour, shorter, almost a slider with depth, mm -hmm. and it became a staying behind it with a fastball, and then turning to the front, which becomes a very violent thing on the elbow. And in '93, I blew out. Yeah. Last question though, how do you get so much bite on your curveball when you're holding it? Uh, really, it's almost against the tread. This is four seam and a lot of guys like to throw it because the seams would help bite, but you didn't. Well, like I said, I, mean, I, I Friday I could be here and this feels good. <clears throat> and then Sunday I, I would be here and this <laughs> felt good. And it, it really felt, it, it really was depending on the baseball. You know how baseballs get a little bit fat and some have better seams. You know, every, every baseball we get is never the same. So I would just literally go, okay, you know what? It's Friday, this feels good. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, this felt good. It, it was just whatever I did, I had this much of my middle finger locked in on the seam because that was the only thing I had on right. the ball.